Hey guys, Hackexploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the OSCP prep series. We will be taking a look at various hack the box and Volnhub boxes in order to prepare you for OSCP. Now we already have uh, an ongoing series or playlist on this and you can view all our previous Volnhub walkthroughs and hack the box walkthroughs uh, in the playlist. The link to them will be in the description and we will also be combining all of them so that you can find them in one centralized source. So we are following a set structure of boxes that uh, do uh, so sort of mimic or are very close to the ones you'll find uh, you know in the OSCP examination as of the current one right and the goal is to sort of prepare you for the labs by doing the types of boxes you are most likely to encounter all right so we've already completed Chaoptrix 1 uh, the Mr. Robot uh, Volna box and now we're moving on to Chaoptrix we'll be moving through the entire Chaoptrix series and then taking a look at the various hack the box ones all right, so let's get started. So I have already have Chaoptrix 2 running on my uh, local area network here, and um, it is uh, a VM, and I'll be posting the link to download that in the description. Uh, the local IP is 192.168.1.104. So let's get started by analyzing the Nmap scan. Uh, by the way, a walkthrough of all of these boxes is available on our blog at hackersploit.org uh, or hsploit.com. Uh, so you can find them over there if you are facing any issues. Right, so this is our Nmap scan right over here. And as you can see, we have various po uh, ports open. We have an SSH port. Now we have a web server running right over here. So we have both HTTP and HTTPS. So port 80, port 443. Uh, we also have an RPC uh, port here. Um, or RPC bind rather. Uh, we then have an IPP uh, port here running CUPS version 1.1 and a MySQL database that looks like it does require authentication. Um, so it looks like OpenSSH 3.9 uh, P1 isn't vulnerable to any particular vulnerability, although it may be a, a way to, to gain entry after exploitation. Uh, our main target, first of all, is to take a look at the web server. So let's get started with the web server. Uh, so that is 192.168.1.104 and we'll also load this up on HTTPS like so and uh, as you can see we get an error with the HTTPS uh, link here telling us that we have received an invalid certificate that could be because uh, of the age of the virtual machine and the fact that it was the SSL certificate may have expired however if we take a look at the uh, at the HTTP uh, website here or the link you can see that we have a remote system administration login and uh, this is uh, one of the aspects that we are targeting first of all so again it's username password uh, sorry about that and again we can view the the source here and uh, there we are we have the uh, the form and uh, so this is the post right over here and index.php of course uh, we have the username and the password so very very simple uh, PHP login uh, screen here or login system which means it is interacting with MySQL because we also found the MySQL database so we can try SQL injection here so we're going to try a few simple uh, you know login bypass tricks of course one of the first ones is admin and we then uh, add the comment there and we of course let's use a single quotation mark there to pass through and once we hit login you can see that that's simple uh, so that simple uh, SQL injection uh, trick lets us log in or bypass the entire login system as the administrator. Uh, we now have a welcome to the basic administrative web console page where it allows us to ping uh, a machine on the network. So uh, on some level, this is performing OS command injection. Now, if this is your first time hearing about command injection, you can watch our independent video on command injection where I cover all the various ways of performing it with different types of filters that prevent you from, uh, from, from doing it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to test out whether this does work. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, provide an IP here, a local IP on my network just to scan. And um, if you take a look at the results, they're very interesting. You can see it performs the ping and we get the results. So th this is performing uh, OS command injection. And we know that this is uh, th this is a Linux box, right? So uh, we can now uh, we can now end this statement and then provide additional statements to be executed by the system. So we can say pwd, and as you can see, after the ping is completed, it then uh, executes our next command, which it, uh, it prints our current working directory, 
and we can see that it is in the var www html directory which is uh, the default for apache uh, which also tells us that this user could be potentially the apache user the apache system user which is quite interesting which means we will have to perform some level of privilege escalation so of course our next step is to see if this can of course do it uh, on its own so we'll run this one more time and as you can see it gives us the command right over here so let's try a few more commands so we can say ls and it lists for us the files within the apache directory which we have index.php and the ping it.php file which is what is being used or to process the command injection right over here all right so we can now use a reverse shell here of course a bash reverse shell so i'll open up the reverse shell cheat sheet that is found on pentest monkey and we'll be using this one right over here so what i'm going to do is we can set up a netcat listener here so we'll just open this up and let me just clear this and we'll say netcat nvlp 1234 on port 1234 just so we can test and see if this works we'll also be trying to see if we can get a meterpreter shell so we'll try that out one second in fact in the meantime what we can do is just let us start up uh, the uh, metasploit here so msf console and uh, we can now move on here and uh, let us try and paste that in here so of course we're ending the statement uh, and then we obviously want to paste this in and uh, we are going to be connecting back to the IP of uh, what our local IP should be um, IF config let's run this and you can see it is 192.168.1.106 all right excellent so we will be using that um, so I'm going to say we'll get rid of all of this uh, 192.168.1.106 and the port is going to be port 1234 here uh, like so and uh, we can then hit submit while we have the uh, the listener running, the netcat listener. And uh, once we open the netcat listener, you can see we get a bash shell without any job control, which is uh, one of the, the, it's a good reason for us to, to try and use a meterpreter or to try and upgrade this to a meterpreter session or a shell. Um, so what we can try and do now is perform some uh, enumeration here. So some system enum enumeration just to get an idea of what we're dealing with. So uh, we can try uname A, and we can see it's running Linux uh, version, Linux kernel version 2.6.9. Uh, let's see what OS we are currently running. LSB release A. We're running CentOS version 4.5. And uh, one second, let us just go into this. And we're going to use the exploit um, uh, multi handler. And we will set the payload to. We are primarily using Linux, so uh, uh, 32 bit, of course. And this is a shell. And uh, we're using reverse TCP. You can also use HTTP if you want. We'll hit enter, show the options here. And we'll set the L host to 192.168.1.106. And we'll leave the L port at 4444. And what we will do is hit run now. And uh, we will now go back into our into our uh, little uh, ping uh, functionality here or the uh, the administration web console and we will simply just change this port to 4444 and if we hit submit we go back to metasploit and as you can see we have a command shell open so let us just try and get some response here so obviously no job control um, what we can do is uh, if I just type in ID you can see we are currently logged in as the user Apache which is a system account so get Etsy password uh, let's see what users we currently have running. So we have Apache, we have John and Harold, which I'm not too sure we are able to log in as, and we also have the root user. So uh, let us just send this to the background here, and uh, let us, uh, of course, try and upgrade this if we can. So sessions, uh, let's list the sessions. We only have one session. So sessions, um, and we're going to say upgrade session one and hit enter. And uh, let's see if we can upgrade this shell. Otherwise, we'll have to use our our normal shell. So there we are, interpreter session. And uh, yeah, it looks like we cannot uh, upgrade this shell. So no problem at all. We're just going to close this. Uh, so we'll exit out of that. And we can still use this one over here. Um, so uh, the first thing we need to do, or we've already established, is what versions are or what software is running. Uh, so we know it's running CentOS version 4.5 so let's uh, run a quick search exploit uh, here so search exploit and we're going to say centos version 4.5 let us try and oops sorry that is the uh, wrong spelling there uh, centos 4.5 and i'm going to enter and uh, we have a few options here that allow us to perform privilege escalation we have the first option 
and we have the second option which um, is really not for us we are primarily interested in this one as it it does suit the version we're talking about and also the kernel matches here so 2.6 uh, so anything less than 2.6.19 and greater than 2.6 here so we'll use this exploit here so we're just going to copy that so copy uh, user share uh, and we're going to say exploit db and we'll paste in the directory here so root uh, desktop and volnhub and kyoptrix2 we'll paste that right in this folder here and let's take a look at this exploit so the exploit is 9542.c or dot c and uh, we can see that um, it was dis discovered by the Google security team and it gives us options in regards to the compilation. Uh, now, the, Im the important thing about this compilation is that it has to be done on the system itself, as you can see. So with the bash uh, provided here and then we run the we run the GNU C compiler. So the first thing we need to now do is we need to copy uh, or we need to get this uh, exploit onto the system. Um, so we are currently in the uh, HTML folder or the Apache directory, uh, the pre-configured Apache directory. So we'll go into the temp folder because that's where we will probably have permissions. Or if we try and access the root user, sorry, uh, uh, the root user, um, we can see we do not have any permissions, right? So uh, what we'll do is uh, if we just print the current working directory, we're still in temp. So let us run simple HTTP server here. So it's Python M simple uh, simple HTTP server and then of course uh, HTTP server will run that and the, but the default port will be port 8000 and we'll copy that over uh, so 954.c that's the file we want so we're just going to say wget HTTP uh, 192.168.1.106 and uh, this is going to be using port 8000 uh, the name of the file is 9542.c so 9542.c hit enter and we get the file so if we list the file right over here excellent so we can say g uh, gcc and we hit uh, output we want to output into exploit we'll just call it exploit and the name of the file is 9542.c and then we also want to exploit it directly after so we're going to say exploit and hit enter and immediately we get uh, the we get a shell now and um, of course with uh, with with the bash shell uh, we previously had but now if we type in id you can see we now have the root user and we have six we have successfully gotten root on this box all right so this was quite a simple box but one that covers uh, quite a few things uh, really really well and tries to basically uh, implement a correct flow of going about things so uh, there's there's a there, there's a tons of places where you can sort of get confused with this so for example if I just clear this up, you can see that uh, with the nmap uh, scan, you can start targeting the uh, the IPP port here. You can also target the MySQL database here. And I'm sure there is or are quite a few other ways of targeting this box. Let me know what you guys think. Again, we'll be going through all of these various boxes just to get you guys ready or uh, to, to essentially give you an introduction into various CTFs and various uh, vulnerable boxes. So. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or suggestions. You can check out the, uh, the walkthrough or the write-up of this box on our blog at hsploit.com and we'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.